very nature of Manifest Destiny, this idea of being a chosen um, people, was very much embedded in Americans' ideals about themselves, about being um, white, um, and about being Protestant. And I think embedded in that was a real sense of this idea of spreading democracy and republicanism to this vast territory and to these peoples that were situated in these places. Um, now, of course, what it does is it completely undermines the people who are already there in the land systems that are already there. So in the case of Native Americans who had their own land systems um, in terms of using uh, the landscape for their agricultural um, and for their hunting needs, uh, those systems were completely undermined and overrun uh, by Manifest Destiny. And when they encountered Mexicans um, prior to the U.S.-Mexican War and throughout the war and at the end, um, they found a legal regime that was very different from the U.S. system, which had been based in this yeoman, Jeffersonian idea of the small individual farmer outsettling the American West. And when these two conflicting property regimes came into contact with, with one another, the United States very quickly and somewhat easily actually replaced um, those legal uh, land systems. So today when you fly over the United States, you're flying from New York to Los Angeles, and you look out the plane window and you see those little squares out on the landscape, um, what you're really seeing is manifest destiny. You're seeing the United States imposing the grid, the Jeffersonian ideal of the yeoman farmer, and the Northwest Ordinance onto a landscape that had very different sets of peoples, very different sets of property regimes and ideas about how to use that landscape. That idea of manifest destiny was something that um, drove Americans. It drove American foreign policy. It drove American domestic policy as Americans settled that space we call the American West.